now, without further ado, I need them to hear this downstairs. Let's welcome to the stage our Shang Chi panel, the legend of the Ten Rings cast, Simu Liu. Beach on the 
It's very funny. For, for, for context, I, I arrived in Sydney, like I was the first in the cast to arrive in Sydney, and like I knew nobody. So like on the weekend, I randomly went to Bondi Beach and like got tapped, but it was the saddest paparazzi you've ever seen. It was just me in a backpack. Like, yeah. like I wasn't with anyone, I wasn't on drugs, I was like, you know, it was just the lameness, I was just like a little tourist. Yeah, that picture. Yeah. And I just, okay, mm, this is gonna be my brother. Okay. <laughs> I'm half Aussie and I love that you guys had a great experience down there. It's a one and from Sydney too. Okay, tell me about your story. Well, I knew that I was going to audition for, for, the, for Marvel. Um, I didn't know what it was. What gave exactly. it away? Superhero vibes. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they said to me, they need a big guy. <laughs> And I was, I was looking at my mom, so I was like, yeah, you're like, nah. Yeah, nah, I think I can have that, you know? And I'd always had audition for it, and I was very excited, but um, those things take time, and it took like uh, three or four weeks, and then you start to think about it, you start to doubt it, and then obviously at some point I got the call from my agents, and they were like, you want to do Marvel? And I was like, why not? <laughs> I think they said you wanted to marble and put on 30 pounds. I would love to have someone tell me to gain weight, by the way. That's what basically you had to walk up for. Yeah, I think so. I mean, when, when I got the call from my agents, I also had underwears. Also some underwears as well. But, uh, Something tells me that me in underwear looks very different from me. <laughs> I'm so good, though. Still good, still good. Still good. Still good. Just take my... Get to questions right away. We'll start with you over here. How are you doing? What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, um, my name is Kayla. I'm from Philadelphia. Um, Hi, Kayla. Um, my question is just for Simu. I know you're also a giant Star Wars nerd. Yes. So if you could be cast as any Star Wars character, whether or not it's been cast already, who would you be cast as? Whether, like, you know, yeah. It would have to be a Jedi. Because I have. Let's just put it this way, I've broken so many light bulbs in my various apartments doing this. So, I, I guess that narrows our cool down. Uh, I don't know, maybe like Kylo, maybe like Kylo Ren. Ooh. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dark, dark Jedi. The villain is awesome. Hi, oh sorry y'all. Uh, I'm Emily Sissel, I'm from Fredericksburg City. Uh, I'm a Title I inner city middle school social studies teacher, so I'm a real superhero. Well thank you. I'm also sorry that you did not get my number from Bruce, maybe later. <laughs> for that 11 to 14 age group that I can show my students next year. You mean like an advice? Like, like world. Advice. Yeah. Well, my advice will definitely be go to the gym. No, you got the right. Go to the top. I mean, yeah, obviously, do what you love, but uh, never listen to anyone but yourself. If you believe in yourself, it's all what you need. And you're going to make it. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, um, I'd say, what makes you different is your superpower. You know, I think growing up as kids, we're so afraid of being ostracized by the people around us that we try. We see the ways in which we're different, and we hate that about ourselves. We, we just want to fit in. We just want to be cool. And yeah, I'd say, I'd say. The, the differences, the things that make you special and unique, that's cool, you know? But I think definitely every single one of us has talents. We just have to find them. But I truly believe that every single one of us has special abilities. So believe in yourself. We are the best proof that everything's possible.
And if you happen to be six foot four and grow to make three, you know, 300 pounds of pure muscle, then call it Florian. Hit me up. Can I go one of them? Yeah, I, I, I basically just what they say, uh, always believe in yourself and surround yourself with people who believe in you. The idea of believing in yourself and chasing a goal can also happen later in life as well. And there's perhaps people in this room who are thinking about kind of making a change. It doesn't always work out the way it's for you, but let's talk about doing what we sure. want to do. Well, let, okay, let me quick, quick hand um, pull of the audience. Any accountants in the room tonight? <laughs> a lot more enthusiasm than I expected. <laughs> Well, I was an accountant. Um, I, I went to school for finance and accounting. I wound up working in the offices of Deloitte. <laughs> Why did you change it? <laughs> Love Deloitte. Um, but it was one of those situations where you know you do you do four years of school, and I don't know what kind of student you guys were, um, or if you went to school. But I was like, I was the guy that skipped class. I was the guy that like. You know, everyone around me was like reading the Wall Street Journal every day. I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> I want to play Halo with my roommates. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, that should have been a sign early on that I maybe wasn't where I needed to be in life. But, you know, I kind of just pushed on, partially because of the pressure from my family, from my friend group, you know, not directly, but just this feeling of like, I have to maintain like a successful path, right? It looked so good on paper. And, um, and then I got to work for Deloitte, and it was one of those situations where woke up every day miserable, got into work, and it just, you know, not to, again, not to knock on the profession of accounting, but I think there's a specific personality that it's well suited for, and I was completely not that. Um, so I wound up actually getting laid off eight months in. I hadn't even turned 23, and, um, and I was unemployed, and it was, it was kind of that rock bottom moment for me that led me to do that self-reflecting, to say, well, I have nothing left to lose. What are, what are the things that I wanted to do that I never gave myself permission to before because I was afraid to admit it to the world or I was afraid of the way that the world would judge me. And I always wanted to be on a movie set. So um, what else did I do? I went on Craigslist. <laughs> I went on Craigslist. Uh, I somehow wound up on the set of a Guillermo del Toro movie. I was, I mean, it was the coolest thing ever. I'd never been on a movie set before, and then all of a sudden, it's like, you walk in, and it's like a sound stage. I mean, it's honestly, it's a room like this, and, and just imagine, you know, like, buildings that have been built. Like, you know, I, I, it looked like I was in a neighborhood in a different part of the world, and, um, you know, the energy of the set is so kinetic as well. It's so crackling, and everyone's just so full of purpose. Um, it, it changed my life, and I realized from that moment on, I was like, you know, I'm, I need to do things that make me feel like that, like electric, things that get me out of bed in the morning. And um, I didn't have a plan necessarily right from day one, but I was like, I want to find my way back onto a movie set. And so I did, and I was, you know, it was a minimum wage extra for a very long time. And then eventually I got an agent and just kind of kept, kept going. And the whole time I just remember thinking to myself, I, wouldn't, I don't want to do anything else. And uh, and that's that's it. That's how that's how it happened. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't don't do that. I would not recommend it. Don't don't. <laughs> Question over here. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm from DC. Hi, Alex. Um, gorgeous. You guys are gorgeous. Um, <laughs> but my question is for Steve. I am a big fan of Tim's Convenience. Love the show. So I want to know, what was it like playing, you know, one of the new tropes, which is the Asian himbo? <laughs> Can you define for the audience Asian himbo? <laughs> you stepped in it. <laughs> a bimbo but a man. A bimbo but <laughs> I'm mentally trying to figure out if that's a compliment. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, 
I think what you're speaking to is, is this, you know, this, this stereotype that sometimes exists for, you know, I, I think Asian men and women in society, I think we face, we face a similar problem where the media, because here's the thing, traditionally Asian characters written on screen haven't been written from the perspective of an Asian writer or an Asian storyteller, so oftentimes, oh my God. oftentimes, you know, the characters are two-dimensional or they're stereotyped and they're, they're basically, they're created through the lens of a gaze that is not authentic to us. And so, what that meant for Asian women was one thing, oftentimes very, like, exoticized, very, you know, sexualized, and, and for Asian men, it was another thing. It was, like, dorky and, you know, not desirable. And, and you know, it, it, it creates complexes in us growing up when we watch that on TV and we're like, is that all I can be? And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily advocate, like, it, it's like not every Asian man will or should look like me, but I think if I can stand for anything, it's that like everyone deserves to feel good about themselves and you know, whatever that means for you individually, um, you know, the, the media should not be the thing that is like holding you back, you know, and so, so I'm happy to fly in the face of that. really big deal for my family and for, uh, I assume, a lot of people like us. Um, so my question is for Mender and Simu. I was wondering, what is it like to just suddenly like, go from normal life to being thrust into the middle of this cultural flashpoint and to be like this symbol of representation for so many people? Or, you don't want Florida to take that one? Uh, I, I mean, you can try. <laughs> I'll take it off to <laughs> um, No, that's a, that's a really wonderful question. I mean, uh, did you want to? Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I had the I had the immense privilege of being on a, a show called Kim's Convenience for many seasons before, and uh, and you know the thing is we were we were getting those questions about representation all the way back all the way back when you know and, and I remember the first time or you know when I was start when I was really just starting out our first season had come out and it was like when we were doing these press runs nobody would ask us about the show. <laughs> Like, they would just ask us about being Asian. And it was at that point I realized that, like, we were always just gonna get those questions. I'm, I'm gonna get those questions for the rest of my career. And I could be cynical about it, or I could really see it as an opportunity to share with the world a unique and new perspective that they might not, you know, have, have considered before. And so, you know, I, I started leaning in, and, and I feel like the more, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, and then, you know, it, it, I also feel like, as much as I can, I try not to make the conversation about me. I think there's a message, and a, you know, there's a, there's a message out there that's far bigger than than my own individual career. And so, you know, I want to put myself in service of that. And uh, if I'm temporarily the instrument through which that message comes through, then great. And somebody else will take, you know, bear the torch later. But you know, to, to be a part of that is very is very gratifying. You know, for people like yourself, people, all, you know, all the people in the audience who grew up not feeling seen or, or heard in a, in a specific way. Um, you know, if you saw Shang-Chi and you felt seen, you know, I, that, that, that means a lot to me. So, yeah. You're nodding in agreement. You're like, yeah, my second nap. You know, it, it, is, it is important to know that at some point, those questions will stop because there will be parity and it will become a non-factor, right? So the groundwork that you oh, lay, right, it, it will, it just sometimes takes time. So we appreciate you not being cynical about the questions because they, they do matter. Question over here from you, hi. Hi, uh, my name is Michael, uh, for uh, CMU. So, we need to get to the Indians. My dream actually got me to that, and then I can just shot the cheese and all that. It was equal, so. <laughs> you do the same, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, did your uh, experience on Kim's Convenience influence or impact as a new face in MCU? Yeah, um, you know, it was all the months of martial arts training that I did to prepare for Kim's Convenience. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, really threw myself into that role, John as a car rental, you know, uh, attendant. Required a lot of a lot of more. No, I'm, uh, 
there, there, are, there are very, very different experiences, but I would say, I would say King's Convenience, I think, you know, because the show ended up doing so well, and, um, you know, we, first of all, when we started the show, it was just this, like, little Canadian sitcom that eventually found its way onto Netflix, and that's how we tapped into a massive global audience, which we're so grateful for, but um, that really gave me the, you know, the, the foundation of a lot of my skills. Because I'm not a theater school brat, you know, so I, I'm very much like a learn by doing kind of guy. And, um, so yeah, those, those seasons of King's Convenience were immensely important for me to learn comic timing and um, just yeah, how to how to sell a joke that's written on a page, how to improvise, and you know, as we know with Marvel, you know, a lot of the characters, you know, we need a sense of humor. You know, Mar Mar we're not the DC universe. <laughs> if the four months of training you did for this particular role is going to come into play in what you're doing in The Witcher. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the, the four month training for Shang-Chi was very intense and also very, very, very fun. Yeah, I, I, I punch Sting every day. <laughs> you actually did it. I, I, yeah. Yeah, she didn't have to. And so you would just hit everything. 
And it was great, except for you. Except for me, right? That was the game. But uh, I mean, it worked. We had a great sequence there. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I definitely got better as a fighter, as an actor, as a person to work with those beautiful people. So. And I hit, like, I kicked him. I must have kicked him in the chest like a hundred times. Bro, you still owe me a lot for that. Yeah. <laughs> He was kicking me like 50 times for that one stunt we had to perform. You know that one thing, that one stunt where he's kicking me back into the bus? Yeah, I do a little flying. Yeah. yeah, I still feel it today. <laughs> That's what we do. we do. Thank you for your question. Over here, hi. Hi, my name is Karen. And Joyce, I am an accountant, and you make our people proud. <laughs> Which more uh, characters from the Marvel Universe would you like to see each of your characters fight in the octagon? <laughs> you know, <laughs> we had such a great run, we had such a great shot. She came out, we saved cinema, it was like we set a Liberty box office record. <laughs> And then Spider-Man came along. <laughs> and in my humble opinion, great movie, loved it. I grew up watching, you know, I've, I've seen all of them. But the, uh, in my opinion, deployed a cheat code and brought back, went nostalgia all the way 20, you know, 20, all of that. Just, I would love to have a friendly chat with Spider-Man. <laughs> I get, I get my rings though. Put it on. Anyone else want to take that? Ant-Man. Ant <laughs> <laughs> I'm the favorite hero. Oh, that was just me. for me, it would probably be Wolverine. I want to hear, what, what do you like to do that's like unexpected? 
Now just imagine you perpetually punching a punch bag. <laughs> punching is nice. <laughs> I'll deny that. Are we talking now about movies? Just in general. In general? Yeah. Hobbies, man. I'm a huge soccer fan. I know soccer is <laughs> But that's again like sports all the way, you know, we can talk. Well, no, 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 I know this. I, I, I will answer on Florian's behalf. Florian, Florian loves anime. Dragon Ball! Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Like, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan. One Piece, Naruto, One Punch Man. Name it all. I love Dragon Ball. That's what I'm So not only am I Florian's bodyguard, I'm now his publicist. <laughs> Actually, you also did that when, when we shot Shang Chi, but uh, I wasn't announced yet, and you started to commenting on the way of pictures, okay. and then everyone realized, man, this guy has to be in Shang Chi. Yeah. Also, you guys are <laughs> man. Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, what about you? Um, I, I, I love Star Trek. And also like I'm gonna answer the fuck. I'm just gonna answer the fuck. Yeah. Mugger loves Lego. Her entire full of Lego. Literally full of Lego. Yes. Um I have so many Lego sets and uh, I give you one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I have um Mickey Mouse uh, the Disney train station, um upside down world uh, from Street I can't wait to see the Shang-Chi one, Munger. That's good. You're gonna have it like in giant size. Lego's gonna send you one just for you, I know. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> what about you? I don't know. I, what am I what is an unexpected thing to do? Exploring um, restaurants. I like I do like restaurants. I like ordering. Okay. Panic ordering. I like panic ordering. Okay, so, well, I, I, I guess I'm known, well, I, I'm a bit of an instigator when it comes to, like, well, first of all, I'm a foodie, I love restaurants, um, and I love, like, getting big groups together, and then my favorite thing to do is to order way too much food for the table. Because, yeah. you know, those of us raised in, in you know, oftentimes different families will understand if all the food on the table is finished, there wasn't enough food. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Yeah, especially when the restaurant tells us that, uh, they're oh, the kitchen is about to close. And I'll just like, I'll panic. I'll be like, oh my god! And then I'll order, you know, 17 minutes. What's your favorite kind of food? Oh. Do <laughs> you guys know Korean? Have you guys been to Korean barbecue? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can eat Korean barbecue for that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Question over here. Hi, um, my name is Tyler. I'm from Fairfax, Virginia. Um, one of my favorite parts in the movie was the karaoke lit scenes. If you had to pick someone from the entire MCU, actor or actress, who would you pick for a lit night doing karaoke with? Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. You are 
for having a dream and, and, and allowing yourself the permission of manifesting it into the world. You know, it wasn't just that I tweeted, it was that like everything in my life was, you know, I felt like I was slowly headed towards that point in the horizon. And to be honest, I didn't know how long it would take to get there, and I didn't know if I would ever get there, but I was so committed to the journey. The journey was what was so fulfilling about the whole thing. And even if I even if I didn't, you know, book this amazing life-changing role, I'd still be looking to the horizon, still be doing everything that I could. And I think it's just re you know, the whole experience has reiterated for me the value in having a dream, the value in, in you know recognizing that dream within yourself, and then this is the most important part, to give yourself permission to pursue it. There's so many things that we're afraid of, you know, there's so many things that we're, you know, we don't want our parents to think a certain way, we don't want our friends to think a certain way, and, and those, that fear stops us oftentimes from doing the things that we truly most want to do. And, and so I think to, to, to to be a conduit of that message of like, you can follow your dreams, you can manifest that which you truly want. I think that's been the most fulfilling part. And being able to speak to you, know, to, to you guys about it and to you know, hopefully you know, stir something up within you guys to, to pursue something that you've always wanted, to, to you know, acknowledge that dream within yourselves. I think that's been, that's been the most exciting part. Okay. crowd behind you guys because this is amazing. So come on out there, uh, publicity team approved to be here. You guys are great, by the way. Thank you so much.